Hello, and welcome to this APGO basic science objective video about uterine atony. The objectives of this video are to understand the mechanism of uterine muscle architecture and contractility, describe how risk factors for uterine atony interfere with myometrial contraction, appreciate the mechanism of action and pharmacology of uterotonic agents, and describe the physiologic mechanism by which mechanical therapy improves uterine tone. This is Ms. Ghana Bleedalata, or Ms. GB, and she is pregnant with twins. Ms. GB is in labor and her uterus is working hard. Let's quickly review the basics before she delivers. The layers of the uterine myometrium are made up of millions of smooth muscle cells. They are organized in layers which run in multiple directions. Uterine smooth muscle is made up of bundles of myocytes which are organized to form a continuous layer and give the uterus its contractile function. There are three layers of fibers, stratum subvasculare, stratum vasculare, and stratum supravasculare that run circumferentially, longitudinally, and obliquely throughout the myometrium. Let's pause, think, and apply. Why is a patient with her placenta located in the lower uterine segment at increased risk for uterine atony? The lower uterine segment has fewer layers of smooth muscle to contract and slow bleeding from the spiral arterioles following delivery of the placenta, nor is the lower uterine segment able to generate enough force to expel clots that have formed. When blood collects in the lower uterine segment, further distension decreases the ability of the available actin and myosin myofibrils to attach and contract. On a cellular level, smooth muscle contraction is mediated by an increase in intracellular cytoplasmic calcium. This activates myosin light chain kinase, which catalyzes the phosphorylation of light chain myosin. Phosphorylated myosin interacts with actin and activates ATPase. ATP hydrolysis and ATPase generates force and the muscle contracts. Smooth muscle relaxation begins with the sequestration of calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum with a dephosphorylation of myosin light chain by phosphatase and inactivation of myosin light chain kinase. Recall that the spiral arterioles are located within the wall of the myometrium and act to provide circulation to the pregnant uterus and its placental bed. There are on average 120 of these arterioles which lack a muscular layer due to endotrophoblastic remodeling. When the placenta separates, these vessels are avulsed at the placental site. Hemostasis is achieved when the myometrium contracts and compresses these vessels, eventually leading to clotting and obliteration of their lumen. Ms. GB is slowly progressing in labor after her pitocin was started 18 hours ago. Although she has started on antibiotics for chorioamnionitis, the babies look great and her labor course continues. Right after Ms. GB delivers, she quickly begins hemorrhaging. The cause of the postpartum bleeding is determined to be uterine atony. But why ever did this happen? Ms. GB was so healthy. There are three main mechanisms that lead to uterine atony. Let's take each one in turn. The first mechanism is over distension of the uterus. This can occur with fetal macrosomia, multiple fetuses, polyhydramnios, and distension with blood clots. Overdistension pulls apart actin and myosin, so they cannot overlap to connect and bind, which limits the contractile ability of the smooth muscle. The second mechanism is anesthesia, such as halogenated agents and conduction anesthesia that can lead to hypotension. The hypotension causes a decrease in circulating oxytocin, which decreases uterine contraction. The third mechanism is the result of an exhausted myometrium. This can happen in the setting of a very fast labor, prolonged labor with oxytocin stimulation, and chorioamnionitis. Repeated exposure to oxytocin leads to oxytocin receptor desensitization and a loss in capacity to respond. The pathophysiology of chorioamnionitis leading to uterine atony is not well understood. Likely that inflammation leads to dysfunctional myometrial contractility. It is hypothesized that the inflammatory process consumes energy that would otherwise be readily available for uterine smooth muscle contraction. Another hypothesis is that cytokine-induced nitric acid production inhibits mitochondrial energy production and impairs contractile function in myocytes. Let's pause, think, and apply. Why does prolonged use of magnesium increase the risk of uterine atony? Magnesium competes for and blocks the calcium channels through which calcium enters the intracellular cytoplasm. Without an increase in intracellular calcium to activate light chain kinase, the mechanism by which smooth muscle fibers contract is inhibited. 
Thankfully, although Miss GB had many risk factors such as over uterine distension with twins and myometrial exhaustion with a prolonged labor and chorioamnionitis, there are many medications and procedures to help stop her bleeding. Oxytocin or Pitocin is used for both prevention and treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. Oxytocin is a non-peptide produced in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus and released by the posterior pituitary gland. It can be given intravenously or intramuscularly, however, in spite of it being a first line of therapy, there is no standardized rate or optimal dose. Oxytocin works by stimulating myometrial contractility by an increase in intracellular calcium. The rate limiting step is the number of oxytocin receptors on the myometrium. The highest concentration is at the fundus, and the receptor concentration decreases as you move to the lower uterine segment and cervix. IV onset is almost immediate while IM is about 3 to 7 minutes. The half-life is between 10 to 12 minutes and there is no difference in the efficacy between IV and IM. Usually, patients do not have any side effects from oxytocin. Due to its structural similarity to vasopressin, exceedingly high doses could lead to water intoxication, hyponatremia, and coma. Now let's pause, think, and apply. In a patient having an 18-week d &E who encounters post-abortal uterine atony, why might oxytocin not be as effective in treating uterine atony as it is at term? Recruitment of oxytocin receptors and the effect of hypertrophy on smooth muscle cells is suboptimal at this gestational age. Methyl ergonovine, or methergine, is another uterotonic commonly used for uterine atony. It is a semi-synthetic amide ergo derivative and the usual dose is 0.2 mg intramuscularly every 2-4 to four hours. It can also be given orally. Methyl ergonovine works by creating a sustained contraction by acting as an agonist on the 5-HT2 receptor found in uterine smooth muscle. Onset of action is usually 2-5 to five minutes for intramuscular and 5-10 to 10 for oral administration. This is a very highly effective uterotonic and common second-line agent. Systemic vasoconstriction can lead to hypertensive urgency, especially in those with elevated blood pressure due to chronic HTN or preeclampsia and should not be used in these patients. Similar HTN urgency can also be seen in patients using protease inhibitors for HIV treatment. Carboprost, or hemabate, is a third highly effective uterotonic that is often used if methyl ergonovine is contraindicated. Carboprost is an analog of 15-methyl prostaglandin F2-alpha. The 250 microgram dose is administered intramuscularly and can be repeated every 15 to 90 minutes with a maximum of 8 doses. Myometrial intracellular free calcium is increased by prostaglandins and this increased availability of calcium leads to increased myosin light chain kinase activity, augmenting contractile response of the uterus. Two most common side effects include diarrhea due to smooth muscle relaxation in the gastrointestinal system and bronchospasm, making it contraindicated in asthmatic patients. Misoprostol, or Cytotec, is a synthetic analog of prostaglandin E1. It is a low-cost, easily stored medication that can be administered via many routes. Although not part of an initial treatment for atony, misoprostol has a role in management especially if other agents are not available or contraindicated. Misoprostol is given in doses of 600 to 1,000 micrograms in almost any mucous membrane, oral, buccal, SL, vaginal, or rectal. It stimulates uterine contractions similar to oxytocin. The peroral and buccal roots have the fastest onset of 3 to 5 minutes. Most side effects are minimal, such as GI upset or transient fever. In some situations, such as for Ms. GB, uterotonics are not able to control the uterine atony. In this scenario, there are several procedures that can also be performed to decrease and or stop the postpartum hemorrhage. The most common procedure performed in the setting of uterine atony is uterine massage. This helps to evacuate the uterus of any clots as well as reapproximate myofilaments to promote contraction. This can be done while uterotonics are being administered. Another option would be a uterine artery ligation. This would decrease the pulse pressure to the uterus, slow bleeding from the spiral arterioles in the placental bed, decrease blood and clot collection in the uterus, and decrease overall distension of the uterus. Similar to uterine massage, by decreasing over distension, myofilaments are able to reapproximate and promote smooth muscle contraction. A B lynch stitch causes manual compression of the uterus, which can also aid in reapproximating smooth muscle fibers. 
The manual compression is done by using sutures which go over the uterus like suspenders. The only other option to consider, short of hysterectomy, is a bakery balloon. It is counterintuitive to consider placing something to further distend the uterine cavity. However, the main role of the balloon is to provide counterpressure at the placental site and allow for compression of the spiral arterioles with eventual decrease in flow and improve clotting and eventual hemostasis at the site. This measure can also be used to provide time for uterotonics to take effect. Thankfully for Ms. GB, she had a multidisciplinary team which had practiced to handle her obstetric emergency. She responded well to urotonics and bimanual massage and is now enjoying time with her two newborns. This concludes this APCO Basic Science Objective video about uterine atony. You should now be able to understand the mechanism of uterine muscle architecture and contractility, describe how risk factors for uterine atony interfere with myometrial contraction, appreciate the mechanism of action and pharmacology of urotonic agents, and describe the physiologic mechanism by which mechanical therapy improves uterine tone. Thanks for watching.